Take two. What were we talking about? Uh, I'll introduce us. <laughs> Welcome to Pub Travels. We are here at our friend's house. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some spicy things and actually enjoy, hopefully enjoy them, some spicy things. But uh, Scott is our ice guy at Windy City Curling. Uh, I met Scott a few years ago when Donna first got back into curling after a few years. Shortly after we first met, uh, I would go to their new dedicated ice facility and I knew nothing about the sport, Head, hadn't a clue. So I looking at the scoreboard at the back there and you know, <laughs> maybe Donna needs a microphone also. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I'm still working on the scoring. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd go to the club while Donna was on the ice. I would hang out with Scott. We would drink beer and I'd learn about curling. That's right. Well, luckily, I'm a very patient man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was how we got to know each other and become friends. And it's always a great time hanging out and watching curling and having a few beers and Get to know people, and that's what the sport's about, and yeah. that's I think why we kind of ended up hanging out so much. Yeah, yeah, curling community is pretty incredible. As I've gotten to know the community uh, all over, uh, it's it's pretty cool. Um, so we can talk more about curling later. But let's get to why we are here for this segment. Yes, we are here for the beer. All right. So Scott and I both have a thing for spicy foods. Uh, this is a jalapeno pepper beer from Bent River Brewing. Where are they out of? They are out of Rock Island, Illinois. Rock Island, Illinois. Yes. So really pretty label. That's kind of cool, kind of funky. Yeah. And it's an interesting concept, a uh, jalapeno pepper ale. We will uh, see what it's like. It's only a 4.8 ABV, so it should be somewhat drinkable. You imagine if it's spicy, it should be easy to take down too, so we'll find out. Mm -hmm. All right, should we give this one a try? Yeah. All right, cheers. Cheers. It's definitely got jalapeno to it. Yeah, you get the, the that green that actually comes through real nice. Yeah. And then the, kind of in the back end, I'm getting the, the pepper. Yeah, there's nice a little, little bit of heat right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad at all. It's actually really quite nice. I wouldn't mind drinking that at all. No, I don't think I, I, I could probably have one meal. Yeah, we have one of these maybe with a nice meal. You know what I'm thinking, yeah. pizza. Oh yeah, pizza you know, would be, We yeah. like putting spicy stuff on our pizza anyway. Yeah, so that kind of wash it yeah, down with some spicy. Perfect pizza beer, wouldn't it? Yeah. I, I like, like that idea. Maybe just with some nice barbecue. Mm. Or pork or something like that, you know, you just kind of have a barbecue, add a little spice to it while you're taking a drink. I think that's, I like that idea because kind of, I think the, the, the jalapeno kind of helps wash away some of that sweetness of right. some barbecue yeah, sauces. Exactly. Yeah, because I usually find like when I'm having barbecue, I want to add a little spice anyway, right? So yeah. I would love yeah. that. All right. All right. So how long have you been curling? I have been curling for almost nine years now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got the bug like everybody else while watching the Olympics. And um, after, I believe it was after the 2014 Olympics that uh, Megan, my wife, decided to find out a curling type of gift for me for Christmas one year and she found out about the club and got me to learn to curl and I did it the next year and kind of fell in love with it and been doing it pretty much ever since. Awesome. So. Awesome. Awesome. So w where did you start curling? I started curling with Windy City Curling um, over at a hockey arena in, um, in Lyle area and it's called Seven Bridges and we used to do just one night a week on Sunday nights. We'd go out, we'd have our two hours of time and in that two hours of time it included us like hauling all the rocks out onto the hockey ice and getting all the ice ready and making everything ready to where it was no longer hockey ice and it was actually curling ice. Um, wow. Sounds like a lot of work. It was. It was a labor of love though. We all loved curling. That's how you knew you loved yeah. curling. If you were ready to go out there and spend a half hour hauling rocks and getting things ready before you could even do it, you were going to do it. So. Are there still a lot of uh, club members that that's, were from, you know, that startup back then? Oh, yeah. I mean, like I said, a lot of the guys that were doing that, they love it. So that's why yeah. they're still doing it, even yeah. now and that we're now at a dedicated facility and you can do it a lot easier yeah. and more often. Um, but yeah, there's still a decent amount of us that used to be there. Donnie used to be there the arena days, myself, uh, Matt, who uh, works at the club with us as well. Like a lot of those guys yeah. have been around ever since then. And we're at the spiel last week, and I overheard Greg Stewart talking about it. So he, he was one of the original. Greg Stewart original was guys. one of the original founders. Uh, him and Matt used to curl out at Waltham Curling Club, which is out by the Starved Rock area. 
uh, and has been around Illinois' oldest curling club, and they would drive, you know, half hour, 40 minutes on league nights to go curl out there. Wow. Uh, but, you know, in the middle of winter, in snow fields and lots of wind in the Chicago area, is not always the most ideal time to be driving home after you've had <laughs> a beer or two while curling. So that's when they decided to try to start something up a little closer to home. All right, so let's talk a little bit about our dedicated ice. Mm -hmm. You were involved in that whole startup as well. Yeah. What's, what was it like from you know, your perspective to take, you know, going from Arena Ice, now you have this building, now you have to buy all this equipment, you got to make water, turn water into ice. Yeah. What was that kind of whole process? for you in the beginning? Well, I mean, at first you want it to be cold, David. That's usually the best way to get ice. Is How cold to... is it in the... In the... <laughs> the ice, I mean, the ice house itself, generally at eye level is about 40 degrees. The tubes that actually create, that run the glycol that keeps the ice cold, those run the glycol at roughly 19 degrees or so. Uh -huh. um, so then, you know, because cold doesn't naturally like to travel up, it likes to go down. So you're trying to freeze something from underneath, you gotta get a little bit colder than you'd think to actually sure. make sure that the surface is still cold enough uh, so that you're not walking around on water out there. Cause right. it's, it's really slippery when it's partially water, partially ice. I've experienced that a little bit, <laughs> yeah. Well, even, even with uh, humidity, you can tell the humidity, uh, e even in the middle of winter, if it's humid mm -hmm. outside, mm -hmm. you can almost feel a difference walking on the ice. Yeah. We, even with your grippers, you feel a little bit of that uh, kind of slippery. Yeah, or if it just gets a little too warm in there sometimes, mm -hmm. it gets a little bit more slippery as well, so. Um, but yeah, it's, it was something that I wasn't really uh, prepared for, and anybody that curled uh, with us the first year is aware of that. Um, it, was, it was a lot of hurdles, a lot of things that we had to learn kind of on the fly because we kind of just threw it together and said, we're going to do this, and went gung-ho, and next thing you know, we had a curling club and didn't know what to do with it. So it, took a, it was a bit of growing pains, but we were able to figure it out, and I always appreciate everybody that curled with us curled with us that first year and continued to curl with us after that and uh, hung it out while we got better and learned what we were doing and were able to make better and more appropriate curling ice each year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, how did you get stuck being the ice guy? Um, it was sort of a necessity slash enjoyment slash I was available sort of a thing. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, I was there. I wanted to help out. You know, I loved curling and I had a chance to really dive into it uh, at that time because my son Connor was growing up, he was in school and wasn't really needing me around the house as much anymore. So I decided I've got the time and I just started figuring it out, looking things up on the internet, uh, talking to people and figuring out what we had to do to have appropriate curling ice. Um, now you've had some experience with some, some major ice people in the yeah, industry. Yeah, some so of the higher I remember you, ice techs. you did kind of a, I forget what it was, when you went down, it was in Nashville? Yeah, we went down to Nashville. Um, they have a wonderful facility down there called the T Line that's owned by a uh, ex football player, Mark Bolger. Um, and he had Sean Olson, who is the head ice technician for USA Curling. Um, so he does all of the ice for anytime you see US Nationals or anything like that on TV. Curling Night in America, like that's him going into those places and getting the ice ready. Uh, he'll be coming down to our club uh, in 2025 when we'll be hosting the Wheelchair Mixed Doubles National Tournament. Awesome. Um, so yeah, he was running basically what they call the clinic there in Nashville. We went down there, uh, spent a weekend with him basically doing the flood, resurfacing, just being able to hang out with him and his crew and pick their brain, ask questions, and get to you know see what their thought process is and what how they try to make ice and see what it kind of compares to like what you're doing and how you could help how they could help you make it better basically. Right. So yeah, it was a great experience. No, I haven't met too many ice guys. I know. I think um, you know the guy at Blackhawk. Um, is it Chris? Mm -hmm. Aaron. Aaron. Yeah. Okay. Um, he seems like a totally cool guy, and, oh, yeah. and, and they've got some really nice ice there. We were up at Appleton, and I think I think their ice guy's name is Chris. Probably. Um, That's why you thought. Because it's not Aaron. Because <laughs> it's not Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> but they had really nice ice also, okay. uh, great experience, yeah. and just, I think, now when I go to Bond Spiels, if you're not a curler, it's a tournament. Um, Try to find out who the ice guy is and just kind of get to know them and you know get their take on on ice making. 
Now, you can always do Ice makers will always tell you what's going on with the ice. If you really want to know what's going on with the ice at a place, just go up, find the ice maker, be respectful, be nice, say hi. How you doing? How's your ice running? They'll be straight with you. We got nothing to hide. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're never straight with Donna, but we'll be straight with other people. I think you're delaying. Yeah, you're kind of putting no. off the... Uh, the yeah, so, all right, so we're, we're, we're having I a... mean, we can talk about ice all we want, but it's not going to change how hot this chip is. <laughs> we're just trying, we're trying to stay as, stay as cool as possible. We're, we're, we should be on the ice doing this. Um, so, yeah, so we had we're... ice, we would be. <laughs> so, okay, so we can talk about that just briefly before we get to our... Yes, yeah, so let's get back into ...packy one-chip <laughs> challenge right into the fire. Um, we had a little bit of an accident, if you will, at the yeah. club a few weeks ago. Um, a month ago now. A month. Wow. Time's flying. There was a fire up above our club, and the water damage, a little bit of smoke, all came kind of down and messed us up a little bit. So you've been involved in that, obviously. Yeah. Um, we're going to put, I'm going to put a post in here also. There's going to be a link for a, um, there's a t-shirt that was made the kind of a fundraiser to try to help rebuild the club. What was that like? Waking up or what would you get a phone call in the middle of the night and like, yeah, I, the club's gone. But no, so I got multiple texts over the course of a couple hours that I did not wake up for uh, until at one point around 2 a.m. I did actually wake up to one of the last ones and I was scrolling through and it was my partner Matt who was at the club at the time uh, when the fire started. And, uh, well, he wasn't there when the fire started. He got a call from the fire department saying there was a fire. So he was there dealing with all that, sending me pictures. So I was just kind of like trying to process this as I was waking up at 2 a.m. And then <laughs> the last one uh, that he had sent me was, we are completely blanked. Uh, <laughs> give me a call at some point, but it doesn't really matter. There's not much we can do. Wow. <laughs> so then I immediately called him. He downloaded to me what exactly was happening, which was basically that, yes, the, we are in the basement of a strip mall. The store above us caught fire, and when the fire departments came to put the fire out, they had multiple trucks all pouring thousands of gallons of water into that store. Uh, and because our stores under, or our clubs underneath them, that water just came right down through their floor and into our ceiling and all over our stuff. So. Uh, although we were lucky to not have any actual fire damage, uh, the amount of water damage to say it was extensive was an understatement. I mean, we have 20,000 square feet of area that's just all torn up now because of water damage. So, yeah. so it's just basically a rebuild point at this or stage at this point. We're starting to pick materials for new carpet, uh, new tiles, nice things like that. Can we um, put in a kitchen? We can't. Oh. I mean, we could, but you'd have to pay for it. Oh. <laughs> because the club. Hey, Don, where's that lotto ticket? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the club didn't have a kitchen insurance. before, I know. so insurance I know. wasn't keen you know, to give us a, a new kitchen for no reason. This and then you can yeah. put in it. Yes, all right, so subscribe. Please click like, share, and subscribe to Pub Travels so I can buy us a kitchen. <laughs> right? That seems like a totally normal thing to do. <laughs> hashtag, ha hashtag Chef Life. I want a yeah. kitchen or a club. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Hey, yeah, that's, I'm okay with that. All right, so. <laughs> Now you're gonna hopefully do some more of these things with me because you like spicy foods. You I like do spicy like stuff. Spicy foods. I so really maybe do. you'll yeah. be my kind of one of my favorite my co-pilot here. To, like torture myself with spicy foods because right. I don't know I'm a weirdo like you. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're we're gonna do this packy one chip challenge. All right, doctor. Doctor. <laughs> So here we go, the Packy One Chip Challenge. I am gonna preface this because um, this was uh, product uh, 2022. We are actually in April of 2024. They don't have to know that. Um, <laughs> so it is a coffin-shaped box with a skull and um, I guess the, the chili pepper, or that I mean the tortilla chip, is supposed to turn your tongue blue. Really? Like legit. Well, that's fun. I don't know if I... <laughs> I don't know if I want a blue tongue or do I need a blue tongue? I mean, it'll be like when I was a kid having a slushie, right? Right. right. Only it'll be extremely hot. Right. So, <laughs> instructions. Uh, what to expect. I'm guessing it's yeah. not good. Oh, it's a little banner. Can we hold up? Oh. How long can you last before a short circuit? Eating or drinking anything for relief? 
do we need to do that? Well, apparently, if you do go only one minute, you're powerless. Okay. If you go 10 minutes, you're powerful. 30, you're supercharged. One hour, you're invincible. I think you go 10 minutes, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm worried about any of those labels. Crush. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. So, where's the... Uh, well, the rules for the challenge? Rules. Eat the entire chip. Prove it. Show your tongue. Wait as long as possible before drinking or eating anything. Post your reaction on social media with, and there's a couple of hashtags, and a mention at, at Packy Chips. So does it cover what happens when you die? Um, I think there's likely a disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't have my reading glasses. I don't see the uh, disclaimer. We're in trouble. It says keep, keep out of reach of children. <laughs> oh, we're totally in trouble. All right. We're totally in trouble. A little, little jalapeno before the... Yeah, a little liquid courage okay. here. All right. So, so the pepper is actually a Carolina Reaper and a Naga. I don't know what a Naga And I've means. never heard of a Naga either. I was, oh, shit. I was, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, it's not a... Sorry. Kid-friendly show. <laughs> so we're just doing this? All right. I don't know. You want to keep talking about it? No, man. It's cool. Let's just do it. Are you sure? I'm a man of action, my friend. I'm so glad I brought the gloves. Oh, mine's already broken. Uh-oh. Oh. How are you going to eat the whole chip? You can eat the whole chip. Oh, mine's broken also. Man. Okay, so I took my little chipper. So that's my piece there. You got to chew it all, right? Well, this is my house. I don't want all this dust all over the place, man. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say you want to wipe the table off after you You yeah. ready? Yeah, man. Let's do it. All right. Cheers. Cheers. It's stale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's got a timer? <clears throat> who's got a timer? Uh, you want me to timer? Sure. I don't know, just for fun. Maybe, it's so stale. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> we should have done this sooner. Yeah, mm -hmm. it. Um, okay. Heat's starting to ramp up for me here. Yeah, heat is starting to ramp up a little there, huh? I'm going to take my gloves off so I can. might need to grab my beer or my milk. Here it comes. Yeah. Your teeth and your tongue. Pardon me? Your teeth and your tongue are Ah. That's good. All right. Do we need to torture ourselves? Torture ourselves? Well. Can you speak properly at the moment? Should we see who can speak longer? Because you're, I think you're fading fast, but. <laughs> it's hot. It's very hot. It's really freaking hot. It's not as hot um, as I thought it was going to be, though. I thought ooh. it was going to be. Yeah, we got, oh, you got some on you. That was yeah. stupid. <laughs> Okay. How long has it been? Uh, 43 seconds. <laughs> 43! <laughs> <laughs> now we delayed, so it's like we've been Okay, now it's starting to hurt. Are right, you going with a jalapeno, or are you going to go with beer, or are you going to go with uh, oh, milk? milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going with milk. All right, yeah. I'm going with milk. Woo! Oh, that was like instant relief, but <laughs> it keeps coming. No. That won't go away. Mm. <sighs> yeah. Ooh, Holy that cow. That is powerful. <laughs> I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> Holy cow. So it doesn't taste good. No. <laughs> no, it wasn't tasty at all either. Oh, well, it was good. It tasted like blue. Oh, whatever blue tastes like. Yeah, hot blue. Mmm. <laughs> Try to swish the milk around a little bit. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. And it's still there. It's yeah. not going away. <sighs> it's good while the milk is in your mouth, but as soon as you swallow it. Yeah, it's gone, it's just, right? It's just, there it goes. Holy cow. We need to just like dunk our tongues in milk for a very long time. Which I don't know that I really want to videotape that though. That seems <laughs> <laughs> somehow inappropriate. Yeah. 
I almost thought we should have got popsicles or something like that. Bring me an ice cream sandwich or something like that. Because then you could have just put it on your tongue. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, why are you coming up with this now, Donna? Because I didn't want to mention it at the time. Because then I'm like, okay. Uh, uh, funny thing is, like, I'm sweating and crying. All at the same time, but the last thing I want to do is touch my face in any way. I know. So I, I was going to wipe, wipe my eyes with that, but I wiped my hands off. Yeah. No, I wouldn't do that. I think I can talk in a minute here. I mean, we're talking right now. It's mm. fine. <laughs> so, on a scale of one to ten, with one being, uh, let's say, cotton candy. <laughs> 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 And <laughs> ten being uh, flatline hot sauce that we both had as well, yeah, which is also terrifyingly hot. Yes. Where would you put this? The flatline knocked me out. Yeah. Harder and faster. Yeah. Um, this is just it, it won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if you remember the flatline didn't stop either. It was a good half hour. Uh, oh yeah. Here, let's try some beer. All right, I might need that. Oh yeah, see that's actually a good strategy. The other spicy flavor. Does it count? All right. Oh, totally. Eyes. Oh, cool. Don't contact fingers. Be careful, yeah. 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 some all over the table. Thank you. All right, so the flat line, almost immediately, I was salivating. Like just, yeah. I couldn't stop. Like it was like, I was drooling. Yeah, like your body immediately yeah. reacts. This wasn't bad. Like, I'm right at that point where I can feel... Well, I was surprised at how long it took for this to actually heat up. Yeah. Like, I felt the whole time I was eating the chip, I was like, oh, this is... I can handle this. Yeah, yeah. no problem. And then once it was all the way adjusted and the powder got a chance to actually coat my tongue, was when I started crying. And sort of regretting it. But now I'm just enjoying it. It's getting better now. It's... You said that the jalapeno pepper beer helped. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me give that a shot. Yeah, the beer helps a little bit. Gives you a different flavor in there. Because mm. the milk, while great, was just kind of coating that. This beer is actually kind of pulling some of that powder off the tongue, which I think Agreed. Helps. I've read a <laughs> couple of things where it's been scientifically proven that the only thing that helps the capsaicin kind of calm down is either dairy or alcohol. Makes sense. That's it. So, ooh, that jalapeno is like just sitting right there too now. <laughs> or it's just still the package chip. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I thought the jalapeno actually just made it nicer. Smoother. Yeah. A little smoother. Yeah. Or it's actually a flavor instead of just burning. Right. All right. I'm afraid to touch my eyes, but... I would still... Like, right. there's still so plenty of that stuff eyes. down there. Yeah, like, I won't touch my eyes. It'll be very later. That's why I kind of, like, put my gloves all, like... Yeah, you want to wipe the So... We're gonna well, thank you for the table clean. Thank you for doing this. You're welcome. Thank Appreciate you for it. bringing it to me. Yeah, ready for some more uh, spicy stuff? <laughs> do you have some? He, he, he wants. To, he still wants to do the hot ones challenge. The hot ones challenge. Yeah, oh, we've yeah. got a hot one season twenty one ten sauce challenge. We'll do it with wings, just like they do in hot Heck ones. Heck yeah! So and we'll then do that. You can go more in depth with your interview questions if you want. Well, because then you know, hot ones is an interview. Yeah, I can bore you with some more talk about curling anytime. <laughs> As long as you're supplying me with hot food, and especially if there's wings, I'll be there. I love wings. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you very much. I'm not going to shake your hand because yeah, that'd we be could, weird. Yeah, we could. Maybe uh, we could just hug it out. Yeah, we could. We could. We could hug it out. <laughs> Thanks for watching Pub Travels. Uh, shout out to Windy City Curling Club, and uh, check out the link below for our fundraiser. Um, anything else you want to add? Uh, no. Thank you very much for coming here, and uh, good curling. <laughs> All right, we'll do this again sometime soon, hopefully. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Please click like, subscribe, and share, but subscribe, 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 please. Uh, would really mean a lot to us. We could use your support. Thank you. I did say, didn't I say thank you? Sure. No. Oh, thank you. Scott, thank you for doing the challenge with me. David, I really appreciate it. You are so welcome. That's going to be at the end of the credits, <laughs> a little, the little blooper section. <laughs>